In today's video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create simple 2D symbols for a bathroom. So I'm going to show you how to create this sink right here and also how to edit previously created 2D symbols so that you can use those again, but resize those to specific dimensions for future floor plans. This is the original sketch by an interior designer. She is a very good client of mine. So this is an authentic sketch. I have made a few modifications. And this is the elevation that she created as well. OK, so you can see the sink there. It's a countertop basin and it has a width of 420. All right. So we have to make sure that the width here is 420. And I think the depth of that is 345. Yeah, about that. So I have removed visibility of the axes just so that I can show you that floor plan. But there's the axes right there. And I have started the floor plan at the origin, which is very important. And you can see that it is quite a basic floor plan, but all the necessary information is there to facilitate discussion with the client. So I'm just going to pan this over to make a little bit of room. And I'm going to select the circle tool and you can see in the bottom right hand corner that it has 68 sides. That's because I previously selected the circle tool and modified the number of sides. By default, circles in SketchUp have 24 sides. That means that they are made up of connected lines and there's 24 of those. I have increased that so that the circle is more smooth. So you can see here, I haven't clicked yet. So here's our circle selected and circles in SketchUp are created using the measurement of the radius. So if we know that the width is going to be 420, then the radius is going to be 210. Then I'm going to click and drag following in the, the red axis. And you can see in the bottom right hand corner that as I move side to side, that measurement changes. So I'm just going to type 210 and then enter. So there is our circle. I'm going to click the select tool to cancel all those actions so that I don't, you know, modify the geometry by accident or create more geometry by accident. And you can see that in the original, I created just very, you know, little bits of detail so that it just wasn't one plain circle. OK, before we add the detail, I'm just going to double check to make sure that the width is correct. So you can see the center point here. I'm going to hover across to the edge, click and drag following the red axis. And you can see that it measures 420. So that's great. OK, and then again, I'm going to select the select tool to cancel the tape measure or you could press escape. So what we're going to do is click on the face of that circle. Then we're going to select the offset tool and we're going to click and drag and I'm going to bring it down 15. OK, so there's the first little bit of detail right here. Now we're going to add the next uh, circle beneath that or within that. So we're going to do that again. Click and drag and let's say 85. OK, so what we're going to do next is squeeze it a little bit so that it has that oval appearance. But don't forget, uh, we want to try and keep it as close to this one right here that I've already created. And this measurement, the depth here is about three, four, five. So I'm going to use my guide and we're going to use the scale tool to bring that down. OK, so let's click. Oh, well, actually, hold on a second. Let's make that into a group. OK. And let's click our tape measure and we're going to click on this edge, which is um, directly down from the center point. And we're going to click and drag following the green axis. And we're going to type three, four, five and then enter. OK, so you can see clearly here where the guide point is. We're going to select the scale tool and we're going to click and bring that down until it snaps to the guide. So let's just scroll in until we can get that. There we go. Where When it says guide point, that means that it has snapped onto the guide point. And you can see that very clearly. OK, 
So let's just pan out and zoom out, okay? And then go to edit and delete guides, just to get rid of that. And if we select the tape measure, go to the center point. So there's our center point there. And we're just going to go down to the edge. And then we're going to click and drag and then hover over that other edge. And you can see very clearly that it says three, four, five. And let's just double check this measurement again. And that's four, two, zero. Okay, so that's perfect. We know that that sink is 100% the size that it should be. And obviously that's very important when you're creating floor plans, especially when there's furniture items because everything has to be to scale and you need to make sure that you're allowing enough space for those items to be part of the layout. Now you can see I've added a little bit of like a plug hole here. Um, I didn't add it at the same time as this because I knew I was squeezing that down a little using the scale tool. And if we had have included this little plug detail, um, it would have been squashed as well. And that's just not going to look very good. So let's create the little plug. We're going to click the circle tool and we're just going to click off here to the right. We're going to click and drag and I'm not going to be overly fussy about the size. Uh, you know, let's just type 20, you know, that should be fine. And then we're going to make it into a group. We're going to explode that and we're just going to find the center point. So if you hover over there, if you zoom in enough and hover over the center, you will see the label that says center in group and you will also see a purple little circle. OK, we're going to click and drag and we're going to bring it over um, the 2D symbol and we're just going to hover over the end point and drag and just, you know, hover there and then drag it down so that our symbol is in the center point of the sink as well. So these are just great time saving little workflows so that you don't have to constantly use your tape measure in order to measure things to position them. OK, you can use the inference points in SketchUp to do that. So I'm going to click in the center of that and I'm going to explode and then I'm going to click the face, select the offset tool and just bring that in a little. So let's say, you know, four, and there we go. And then generally you would make that into a component, okay? So we're just gonna type sync two, and then create, and that's it. The reason we've used a component is because if you make duplicates of that, um, and you make a change to one of them, those changes will be replicated within the same file, okay? Uh, you don't have to make it into a component, you can make it into a group, but that's a completely separate conversation. So there is our sync. We have created our sync. And then obviously, let's just delete that. Obviously, then you would click and drag and just put that into position of where it should go. OK, and then let's take a look at the WC. So in our floor plan, you can see that the interior designer has specified that the WC must be 360 in width and 523 in depth. OK, and she has denoted that with a little uh, rectangle, which is fine. Um, I already know that I have a 2D symbol of a WC elsewhere, so there's no point in reinventing the wheel. I'm going to find that uh, WC and then edit it to suit okay this, this is just another great time saving process so in my sketchup bundle course for both professionals and students i provide a file uh, full of 2d symbols that you can use in your own projects and in this area right here you can see a wc you can actually see the sink um, that I previously had as well in that floor plan. So I'm going to select it, go to edit and copy, go into our bathroom floor plan, edit and paste. And there it is right there. OK, so you can put it over here. You can put it here wherever you want. And I have already deleted the floor in this floor plan. So there is no face. OK, I'm going to rotate that around and 
um, when I'm happy with where it's been positioned for the minute, I just click in the white space to the side of the floor plan so that it's no longer selected, okay? Now, um, this is one that I prepared earlier. So I'm just going to delete that because we're going to modify this one. And you can see that I need to change the style a little. The WC that is in this design scheme it has a concealed cistern. So what I'm going to do, and it also has one of those push plates, you know, um, in like a stud wall. So we're going to explode this. All right. So we can have direct access to it to modify it. And we're going to remove part of this cistern. So I'm going to go to the midpoint and draw a line across there from one edge to the other. And then I'm going to delete the geometry that I don't need. So I'm just going to take off the access like that. Okay. And I'm going to remove the handle because as I said, there is a push plate for this that the interior designer has specified. So I'm going to delete that and I'm just going to use the line tool to connect those uh, two endpoints there with that gap. And it's done. Okay, so that's it modified. And what I need to do now is just double check the measurements. So I'm going to measure from the midpoint for at one edge to the other edge. Okay, and it's coming up as five, five. Well, yeah, five, five, five. Okay. And at its widest point, it is 398. So we need to make a few modifications here. So it should be 360. So what did I say that was? 396. Okay. So we're going to make it into a group because we're going to resize it. And when you resize using the tape measure and you don't want the rest of the geometry in the file, to be resized as well, you need to make your geometry or your object into a group or a component. And the quickest way I'm just going to deal with that at the minute is to make it into a group. I know I probably shouldn't be doing that, but you know, we won't tell anyone. So I'm going to double click because I want to edit this. I'm going to select the tape measure. I'm going to click on the widest point here. And before I click, I'm going to press control. And this is how we resize. I'm going to click and drag and bring it over to the other edge. And when I reach the other edge, I'm going to click. Then I'm going to type the measurement that I would like that to be. So I'm going to type 360 and enter. I'm asked, do I want to resize the active group or component? And I do. So I click yes. And you will see there if you're if you have an eagle eye that that uh, WC symbol has reduced in size slightly. Okay, so let's just double check that measurement. If we click one side, well, I'm not really at the right measure at the right point. Hold on. I think it was here. There we go. So it is now 360, which is exactly what it should be. Okay, now we need to make sure that the depth is 523. And as I said, it's well, it's 500.7 now because we resize the entire object. So what we're going to do is we can't resize it again because if we do that, then, you know, it's going to affect the width. So we're going to use the scale tool to adjust the depth, but it will still be OK in terms of the width. So what we're going to do is select the tape measure click the midpoint and drag and then type five, two, three. OK, so this is where we want the edge to go to. I'm going to select the WC. I'm going to select the scale tool and I'm going to click and drag and bring that up to the line. And you can see that that has happened because it has snapped onto that line and it also says on line and then release. And if we select the tape measure and just double check that, you can see that it now says five, two, three. And we can also double check that width uh, to make sure it's still the same. And it is, it's three, six, zero. Okay, so we have modified that 2D symbol to specific dimensions as per the interior designer's sketch. We're going to go to edit and delete guides. And then we're going to select 
the W C, we're going to hover over the midpoint and then we're going to click and drag so that we can position this and we're just going to snap it onto the edge of the, you know, stud wall or, you know, that countertop and then click and then select the select tool, click in the, the white space to the right of the floor plan or wherever to end that action and there you go. We have created a an oval shaped sink and we have edited a previously created WC to specific dimensions.